Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the quotient rule to find the derivative of functions and I'm going to walk you through three examples where we have square roots. Looking at part A, we've got y is equal to x squared minus 5 divided by the square root of x. Now whenever you need to use the quotient rule to derive a function, it's best to start with a quotient rule formula. And that is, dy dx is equal to vu dash minus uv dash over v squared. And so we're going to let u equal the top function and v equal the bottom function. And so if we let u equal x squared minus 5, then deriving this u dash is going to be 2x. v is going to be the bottom function, which is the square root of x, and we write this as x to the power of a half. And so deriving this, this is going to be a half times x to the power of minus a half. From here, all we need to do is sub these into the formula to work out dy dx. And so dy dx is going to be v times u dash, and so this will be x to the power of a half times 2x, and then minus u times v dash. And so this will be x squared minus 5 times a half x to the power of minus a half. And then divide by v squared. And so this is going to be the square root of x all squared. And now simplifying this, using the index laws, x to the power of a half times 2x is going to be 2x to the power of 1.5, which is 3 on 2. And then expanding the brackets for the second term, this is going to be minus a half times x to the power of minus a half times x squared is going to be a half times x to the power of 3 on 2. And then we're going to get plus 5 on 2 times x to the power of minus a half. All over, the square root of x squared is just going to be x. Simplifying further, the numerator is going to become 2 minus a half, which is equal to 3 on 2, and then x to the power of 3 on 2. And then plus 5 on 2, x to the power of minus a half. And then all over x. We can take out a half times x to the power of minus a half as a common factor, and so the numerator can be written as a half times x to the power of minus a half times 3x squared plus 5. And this is going to be all over x. And for the final answer, we want to have positive powers. And so rewriting this, this is equal to 3x squared plus 5 over 2 times x to the power of a half times x. And simplifying this, this is equal to 3x squared plus 5 over 2 times x to the power of 3 on 2. Part B, y is equal to 3 times the square root of x over x plus 2. And so we're going to let u equal the top function and v equal the bottom function. And so if u is equal to 3 times the square root of x, which we can write as 3 times x to the power of a half, then deriving this, this is going to be 3 over 2 times x to the power of minus a half. v is going to be x plus 2. And so deriving this, v dash is going to be 1. Now we just sub these into the formula to work out dy dx. And so dy dx is going to be v times u dash, and so this will be x plus 2 times 3 on 2 x to the power of minus a half, minus u times v dash, and so this will be minus 3 times x to the power of a half, all over v squared, which is x plus 2 squared. From the numerator, we can take out a half times x to the power of minus a half as a common factor, and so this is going to be a half times x to the power of minus a half times 3 times x plus 2, and the second term will become minus 6x, and then all over x plus 2 squared. Cleaning this up, this is going to equal a half times x to the power of minus a half times, and now expanding the brackets, we've got 3x plus 6 minus 6x all over x plus 2 squared. This is the same as 3x minus 6x, which is minus 3x plus 6, all over 2 times x to the power of a half times x plus 2 all squared. We can simplify further by taking out a 3, or minus 3 from the numerator, and so this will be minus 3 times x minus 2, over 2 times the square root of x times x plus 2 all squared. Part C. Y is equal to x minus 4x squared over 2 times the square root of x. 
And so we're going to let u be the top function and v be the bottom function. And so if u is equal to x minus 4x squared, deriving this, u dash is going to be 1 minus 8x. v is going to be 2 times the square root of x, which we write as 2x to the power of a half. Deriving this, this is going to be a half times 2, which is 1, and so this will be x to the power of minus a half. Subbing these into the formula, we're going to get dy dx, and so this is going to be v times u dash, which will be 2 times x to the power of a half times 1 minus 8x minus u times v dash, and so this will be x minus 4x squared times x to the power of minus a half, all over v squared, and so this is going to be 2 times the square root of x, all squared. From the numerator, we can take out x to the power of minus a half as a common factor, and so we can write this as x to the power of minus a half, and then times, this will become 2x times 1 minus 8x, and then minus x minus 4x squared, all over 4x. Cleaning this up, we can bring x to the power of minus a half to the denominator, and so this is going to be x to the power of a half times 4x, and expanding the brackets, we're going to get in the numerator 2x minus 16x squared, and then minus x, and then plus 4x squared. Cleaning this up, this is going to be x minus 12x squared, all over 4 times x to the power of 3 on 2. We can take out x as a common factor from the numerator, and so this is going to be x times 1 minus 12x, over 4 times x to the power of 3 on 2. The x's can cancel out, and so this is going to be 1 minus 12x, over 4 times x to the power of a half, which is the same as 4 times the square root of x. And that's it for these three examples. If you found this video helpful, then click on the like button or comment below and let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you're studying maths methods, then log into the maths methods club where you can group exam questions related to question rule. Good luck, and I'll see you guys in the next video.